All right, everyone. Hail and welcome to this week's episode of Midgard Musings. My name is Jesse, and if you haven't already figured it out, this is a channel where I upload new content every Sunday on Norse heathenry, Norse heathenry related subjects, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, I've already gotten everything set up here because uh, I'm actually out of town there during the time that you're watching this video. I'm pre recording everything and getting it set so that way you guys have stuff to watch. Um, but I've got everything already set up, got the candle lit, got the incense going, as you can see by the plumes of smoke that are coming out here. Um, and it's raining right now, I'm not sure if you can hear it, um, but it's raining pretty good out there, which I'm really happy about because i got a garden that I'm uh, uh, growing some stuff with, uh, a friend of mine and my father-in-law, so it's getting really good uh, tending to out there from the rain, so hail frere. And uh, so anyways guys, today's episode is episode uh, four of the uh, Nine Pieces of Eight Rune Study Series. So thank you so much for watching today. If you haven't already, please go down and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Okay, if you don't, give it a thumbs down, that's fine. Leave yourself constructive criticism down in the comments section. And if you like it and want to see more videos of mine, uh, please subscribe and turn on bell notifications so that way you are notified every time that I upload new content. Alright, so um, today we're continuing, like I said, the Rune Study uh, Series. Uh, last week we went over Ansus, um, Raido, and Kanas. You'll see an annotated card up in the right uh, corner of your screen. Uh, you can also go down to the playlists for that video and watch that plus the other previous videos that kind of lead up to where we are today. We're doing a three rune a week kind of scratching of the surface study. Um, and <clears throat> let me just preface what I'm about to say, uh, before we go into the discussion, let me just preface it by saying that, uh, you know, what you hear me say and what you hear me talk about in regards to the runes, um, a lot of it's going to be what I've learned myself from it. There's going to be things that I'm sure that if you are studying the runes, or if you've been studying the runes, if you've studied them for any length of time, uh, there may be some things that I leave out or don't bring up that you may want to include down in the comments. Feel free to do so. But again, this is more or less a surface scratching, okay? The runes are such an in-depth thing. Uh, there's no possible way that we could... Um, you know, cover everything in just one video, so we're, we're going we're gonna to kind of go and just scratch the surface a little bit. And it's also my interpretations, things that I've learned from working with the runes myself. So there may be things more that uh, I haven't learned yet that you have, and if you want to include that down in the comments, you're certainly free and welcome to do so. Uh, so today's three runes are going to complete the first it. Okay, there are three sets of it in the Elder Fudark, um, and then each set of it, there are eight runes. Um, so we're going to actually complete the first et and start with the first rune of the second et. Alright, so the first et is considers, uh, considered Freya's et, and then the second et is considered Heimdall's et. So starting today, we're going to talk about Gavo. Alright, Gavo is probably the most important rune um, that really it covers and envelops what I feel heathenry uh, is about, um, and that is gifting. And not just gifting, but mutual gifting. There's a gift exchange, gifting cycle um, that we uh, engage with each other in. We, get, we engage in this gifting cycle with our ancestors, with the spirits of the land and of the home, and with our gods and goddesses. Um, we do this through sacrifice and through offerings. Um, it's basically the process of giving a gift for a gift. We give to them um, to um, increase our luck, uh, to, to get gifts from them. We never just ask for something without first giving something um, in exchange. So the rune Gavo is the rune that really exemplifies what that is. It, it, it just looks like an X, okay? And to me, that's just the equal exchange um, and mutual exchange, okay? We don't want to give more than what we expect. Um, we don't want to give less. Um, and there, there's so much uh, in the, in this, uh, you know, the, the sources that we have, poetic edda and stuff like that, even the Hobamol, uh, that, that really makes the gifting ex uh, exchange, the gifting cycle, such an important part. Um, and, and to me, it, it, Gavo really covers and, and, and 
shows the, the, what true sacrifice is. You know, we, we give of ourselves, we give of our things to the gods, to our ancestors, to the, the whites of the land and of the home. Um, and we give to them freely to, to, to receive freely. Um, and that's to me what, what true sacrifice is. We don't, we don't, you know, say, oh man, you know, I don't want to give up this, this beer. I don't want to pour out this whole corn of meat. I, um, I want that. You know, we give, we give freely because we know that the gifts that we get back um, are so much better uh, than just that one material thing. Um, what I see in, in the importance of Gavo is that anything that we give, um, whether it's, you know, food, whether it's drink, whether it's uh, something that we handcraft, it's something that means something to us. It's not just something that we can easily part with. It's something that we have uh, that is either dear to us for some reason or another, you know. Um, it, it's cost us something, and uh, we, we give freely of it, you know, uh, because we know and we understand the importance of that mutual gifting exchange. So it is such an important room um, to dwell on, and when I see it, you know, appear in a casting or a drawing, um, depending on the other rooms that come around it. Um, there, the, to me, it's obviously a, a time to gift. Um, there, there's something that needs to happen to, you know, kind of start that ball rolling, get that cycle rotating, if you will, um, and to look to gift to one or ones uh, within your community, uh, spend time at your altar with the gods, spend time in, in nature, gifting to the gods and to the land whites. Uh, the land vatir, the host the various forces that we work with in our practices. Um, and, and that's where I see the importance, and that's where I see when Gabo appears uh, of what to look to to do. So then the final rune of Freya's eight is Wunyo. Um, and Wunyo is a rune of joy. All right, it's very uplifting, it's a very positive rune. Um, joy, harmony. Um, has elements of trust, love, uh, really something to do with friendship. Um, and it's, it's, again, like I talked about in last week's video, um, how the organic flow of the runes, okay, um, with Wunyo uh, appearing right after Gabo, uh, it, that, it's a very significant indication, I feel, you know, that there's, there's joy to be had and there's, there's trust that's developed when you engage in that gifting cycle. Um, because somebody gets something from you and then you in turn get something from them. So it builds that munyo, it builds that joy, and it builds that harmony um, with your community and with, your, with, uh, with the gods and with, with the spirits whom we work with uh, to increase the luck and increase the trust, increase the love that we exchange with one another. And, um, it can also have you know, ties to friendship, kinship, um, just strong love and, and bonds that, that cannot be broken through love and through joy. Um, so when you see it, when I see it appear in a, uh, you know, a casting or, an, or a drawing, um, there, there's things around me that at that point in time that, uh, that there's joy to be had for, to look for joy, to maybe perhaps spread joy, to, to get into things that are going to bring positivity, love, harmony, Things that are going to positively build the, your relationship with your community and with the gods. Um, and then lastly, uh, today, which starts the second et, Hemdos et, is uh, Agalas. Okay? And Agalas is a rune that uh, I feel, okay, and you're going to hear different things um, of uh, you know, what rune is associated to which god, this and that. I don't necessarily associate specific runes to specific gods all the time. Um, I know last week we talked about Omsus, which is pretty widely recognized as specifically a rune of Odin, Odin's rune. Um, Hagalas, I've, I've seen it referred to as a rune for Heimdall, um, but I personally don't see Agalas as a rune associated with Heimdall. I see a rune, the Hemda or uh, Agalas, as being a rune associated with Loki, uh, maybe perhaps Hell, but very specifically Loki. Uh, reason for that is it, it, Agalas is the Hail Stone. Okay, it is that destructive, chaotic um, uh, force.
source of radical change, okay? It is a very abrupt, radical, it's not, it's not, there's nothing gradual about it. Um, it's, it's, it's forces of natural destruction, things that, can, things that just come naturally through, whether it be uh, the weather or the, the, you know, what have you, just the natural tides of life. Um, and there are and changes that you just, you, you, there's no way to put a stop to it. it it's going to happen, and, it, and it's happening for a reason. Um, the forces, like, make, uh, you know, the natural forces that come to destroy, um, there's, there's a reason for it, okay? There's, there's a reason for that change, which we'll be getting into in next week's video when we continue on with that, uh, with, with some of the more of the runes in uh, Hamdahl's dance. Um, but the reason why, again, that I associate Hagalas with uh, Loki specifically is that Loki tends to have that essence or that, that aura or that way about him that is, uh, there's a change that is, uh, needs to happen and it's, he inserts that change abruptly and uh, very radically um, and inserts that chaos into your life. So when I see Hagalas appear, um, you know, the, to me it's, it's a Something's about, something's changing, something's going to change, and you can't stop it, you can't control it. Uh, it needs to happen, it needs to happen for a reason that you have to understand. Uh, if you don't let, if you don't work with Hagalas enough to, or, or with the destructive elements of Hagalas, if you don't take control of the situation, it will literally just destroy and, and tear apart and, and be in utter chaos. There needs to be some talking about the next room that comes after uh, Agavas, but there, there's going to be a need for focus on things, and, and there's, again, the organic flow of how the rooms appear. Uh, it's very important. So, um, the, 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 the natural destruction that comes from Agavas, there's a need for change, um, and you can't stop it. So, that's what I look at when I see that uh, Agavas appears. It's okay. Something's about to happen. Anyways, everyone, thank you so much for watching. That concludes today's episode, and um, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have anything you want to add, if you're not too keen on it, thumbs down. It. But please comment down below uh, what you guys think of this episode and all the episodes before. Check out anything that you see appear um, in the end screen. Uh, thank you so much for bearing with me during uh, the last two episodes while I've been uh, out of state visiting family next next week we'll resume the live discussion on Facebook so if you do watch the Facebook live streams we'll be back uh, doing that again next week at uh, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time to continue on with this series okay we've got uh, so five more episodes to go and uh, we're gonna be talking a bit more about my own practices uh, in terms of working with the room just to kind of give you guys a little bit of a, an insight of what I do how I do it maybe it helps you and your approach to wanting to study the runes. Um, but thank you again so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, share the videos. Thank you also again so much for watching. Hail! And I'll see you all in next week's video.